So do you have the math skills to answer this question right here without the aid of a calculator? Well, I hopefully do. And if you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But a lot of you are not going to be able to figure this out, not because you don't really kind of understand most of the prom, but there's one particular part of this uh, prom that will cause a lot of confusion for uh, many of you out there. And of course, I will address that as I walk through the solution step by step. And uh, I'm gonna show you the answer here in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, review the problem here. Now, I don't want to give you too many hints because I want to give you a full opportunity to do this again, we're not going to be using our calculators, but what we have here is the square root of this numeric expression right here. And uh, this is the absolute value negative three. So I guess that's a little bit of a hint. Uh, of course, I'll explain what that means if you don't know. So this is the absolute value negative three times negative of two squared times parentheses, eight minus 20 and parentheses. And the objective is to get this down to one answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The answer is 12. Okay, so how did you do? Well, hopefully you got this right. And again, we're not using our calculators. And if this is the case, if you got this right, we must celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in simplifying numeric expressions. And the first thing we need to keep in mind anytime we are faced with uh, trying to simplify a numeric expression, i.e. do a uh, math problem with various different operations, we need to consider the order of operations, all right? And this is such a basic math principle. So in mathematics, an, uh, an operation is things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and even powers. It's things we do with numbers. And of course, uh, depending on what order you take, you'll end up with different um, uh, values. There's only one correct order, i.e. one correct uh, value for the answer. So you have to keep in mind the order of operations, which is kind of described by this little acronym right here, P-E-M-D-A-S. Uh, well, we refer to this in mathematics as PEMDAS. And again, this is a checklist. Matter of fact, it goes from left to right. I'll quickly explain this here in a second. But uh, for those of you that are not familiar with PEMDAS, there is a nice little uh, saying that goes along with this, just to help you remember this. It is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. People have been saying this for decades. Probably my great, great grandparents were saying this way back in the good old days. And uh, I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. Okay, so let me go to just quickly explain this to you. And then, of course, we'll get into the prom. But again, anytime you are faced with a numeric expression, you need to be thinking about the order of operations, i.e. PEMDAS. Okay, so the first thing here, P, is parentheses. So if you see any parentheses in the prom, and of course, parentheses could be these type of parentheses, or they could be brackets like this, or squiggly brackets. Effectively, these are what we call grouping symbols. Okay, so we're going to handle any parentheses situations. Of course, we have a set right here. So E is powers, okay? I'll explain this. And some of you might be saying, well, this is powers. Why doesn't this say P? Well, the E really stands for exponents. So when you have a power like two to the third power, this little three up here is what we call an exponent. This two down here is called a base of this entire power, okay? So uh, when you have a power in mathematics, there's actually two parts of the power the base and exponents of the E stands for exponents, but you could think of it as powers. Okay, so the next uh, part of the uh, uh, PEMDAS checklist here is where a lot of students get confused. And let me just tell you what this M, D, A, and S stand for before I kind of uh, explain this to the next level, if you will. So M, D, A, and S, uh, M stands for multiplication, D is division, uh, A is addition, and S is subtraction. So it makes sense to be like, well, if this is a checklist and we're going from left to right, then we'll always do multiplication first. Then uh, after we're done with all multiplication, we move on division, 
etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that's not the way it really works. What you want to do is consider these two things as groups. So it's multiplication or division. Okay, whatever you see first from left to right. This is a really important point. So if you see multiplication, then division, you'll do it this way. But if you see division first from left to right, you'll do it this way before multiplication. Same thing with addition and subtraction. Okay, so this is the order of operations. And again, you know, a lot of students uh, think they, uh, you know, know this. Well, a lot of students think uh, uh, to themselves to be like, oh, I know the order of operations. I know PEMDAS. I'm really, really good. But then they, uh, they end up making errors, all right? So oftentimes, you know, especially as a math teacher, probably one of the most common uh, phrases, you know, I've heard of, uh, through the decades is, oh, I knew that. I knew that. Of course, a student will do a problem wrong. And they'll say, oh, I knew that, I knew that, I knew the error I made. Well, if you know it, you got to demonstrate it. So again, you know, even strong math students, uh, you know, if they're not thinking about the order of operations, it's easy to make an error. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what to do next. And here, as some of you might uh, be thinking, well, uh, this PEMDAS, you know, we're, you know, in here, there's nothing about square roots, right? Because we have the square root here. But we do have some parentheses, so you can kind of go here. But technically speaking, and this is going to be kind of cool for some of you who have not studied powers and exponents, you can see I have this uh, underline right here, this parentheses, right? So we're like, all right, parentheses. So we're going to handle these parentheses right here because we do have a set of parentheses. And, of course, that is what we're going to do first. Now, I could do this problem in multiple st you know, steps at one time, but I'm just going to walk through it step by step. But really, um, this square root right here, I could express this problem uh, differently. Okay, I'm gonna, I could do this. I can uh, erase this square root, and I could take this entire thing to the one half power using parentheses. Now, some of you might be saying, "What is this guy talking about? You're totally confusing me, Mr. YouTube Math Man. You changed the problem." Well, hold on one second. Uh, I'm just going to uh, show you uh, something that you may not have uh, yet learned in mathematics, that the square root of a number, in other words, like the square root of 4, is equal to 4 to the 1 half power. Now, I can even write that this way, uh, parentheses 4 to the 1 half power. So I'm just kind of throwing this uh, in as an aside because some of you might be saying, well, you're doing, you know, there's a square root here and you're going inside the square root. So why, you know, you know why are you doing that? Well, technically we could uh, think of this square root as uh, um, this entire thing to the one half power. So there's parentheses. So we're gonna go inside of this expression and then we're gonna be looking for more parentheses and that's what we have right here. Okay, so just a little bit of uh, extra math for you. And, you know, some of you might be saying, well, I don't need to know that. Well, yes, you do. You may not be studying it now, but if you continue to study mathematics, you're definitely going to need to understand that. Okay, so we're going to handle 8 minus 20, and we're going to do this right now. And 8 minus 20, hopefully you're up to speed on your positive and negative numbers. 8 minus 20 is a negative 12. Okay, so... At this point, you know, we know why we're working inside the square root because we could think of this whole thing to the one half power. But a lot of you, um, again, didn't, you know, uh, might have been confused when it comes to the order of operations. We know we don't speak about, um, you know, uh, the order of operations in terms of square roots. There's actually another way we could look at, uh, at this. We could think of this in terms of exponents as well, right? This entire thing to the one half power. But some of you might say, well, this is exponents. Well, no, we're putting this entire expression right here uh, in a uh, set of parentheses. Okay, I don't want to kind of belabor that point. Hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so at this um, point of the problem, you know, this is pretty straightforward. We're going to have to need, uh, need to understand absolute value. And we're going to have to deal with this right here. And we're going to stay, uh, take these steps next. And let's go ahead and take this step after we take the step of having you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hitting that notification button. And uh, for those of you that are subscribers, thank you so much. You know, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, for those of you that are new to my channel or have not yet subscribed, this really does help me big time. It really kind of fuels my, I want to say my motivation because I'd be uh, teaching anyways. I am obsessed with uh, trying to help as many people as I possibly can 
uh, in mathematics, by, by, but this really does help the algorithm so I can reach more people. And the more people I reach, the more people I feel like I'm helping. So it is important. So thank you for subscribing. By the way, if you're new to my channel, I have over 2,000 plus math videos uh, from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. All that content is for you. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on with the problem. And we're going to just take it one step at a time. And the next thing I'm going to do here is the absolute value of negative 3. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what about PEMDAS? And, you know, don't we have to handle uh, powers first? Yes, we could. Okay, you, we could basically do this part and then come back to here. But we have multiplication. So uh, we're, it, the order is not going to really make a difference here because we're uh, multiplying three numbers. Okay, so this is the product of three different numbers. We just got to figure out what each value is equal to. Okay, and again, sometimes uh, when you're doing an order of operation problem, you know, going to be given things like square roots, absolute value, other type of functions that, you know, um, you know, aren't necessarily fully explained in the PEMDAS, if you will. But I'm going to go ahead and handle this right here. Okay, we're going to go from left to right. And again, the order, you know, will not break the final uh, answer because it's just a product of three different numbers. So um, here is the absolute value of negative three. Now you can see the answer is three. And if you don't understand absolute value, this is really, really important. So the absolute value of any number will be that positive version of that number. And this is a full another um, explanation. I'm not gonna get into it because I don't wanna make this, make this video uh, too long. If you don't understand absolute value, you need to. The absolute value really is a distance a number is from zero. So again, anything you don't understand here, uh, you might want to check out, well, I'm going to give you two, a couple suggestions. One, uh, uh, for those of you that just need a basic math review, I have a great little mini course, kind of like a little mini math boot camp. It's called my Math Foundations course. You'll find a link to that in the description below. But if you need um, a little bit more help with uh, powers, exponents, absolute value, you might want to check out like my pre-algebra course or algebra one course. You'll find links to that in the description. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on any of this or pretty much all of this stuff on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so but that's the absolute value. Hopefully, all of you understand that. And notice, I'm not trying to do multiple steps at once here. Okay, I'm just kind of taking one step at a time. And this is where we're down to now. We have 3 times uh, negative 2 squared times negative 12. Now, in the beginning of this video, I said a lot of people um, are going to make uh, a very common error, and it's this point in the problem. Okay, this is a very, very confused uh, situation, and that is when we have a negative sign in front of a power. Okay, a lot of students confuse us, and I understand why uh, it can be confusing. I'm going to clear this up, but first, let's just go ahead and answer the question. So, uh, a negative of two squared is negative four. Okay, that's what that's equal to. But a lot of you might think, oh, isn't the answer uh, positive four? Well, let's go ahead and address that right now. And let me just erase this right here. Okay. So let's uh, address this because this is a, a very, very kind of common uh, area in math where students go, wait, what's going on? I'm totally confused. Okay, so negative 2 parentheses squared is not the same thing as negative 2 squared. Okay, negative 2, when this is, this negative 2 is inside parentheses, what this is saying is take this negative 2 and multiply it by itself. So this is negative 2 times negative 2, which of course a negative times a negative is a positive. But this right here means something different. Now, if you are saying, no, you're wrong, Mr. YouTube Math Man, well, go ahead and put it in your calculator. Use that little positive and negative um, a button, not the minus sign. So you'll put in this little minus 2 squared, and you'll see that it will come out as negative 4. Okay, because what's going on here is this uh, exponent is acting upon this number here. This really means uh, the opposite of 2 squared. Now, 2 squared is 2 times 2, so this is negative 4. Okay, a very, very common mistake. You know, I've been teaching math for decades. I've made all the mistakes myself. And I'm telling you right now, this uh, is a common misunderstanding. So if this is uh, where you got this problem wrong, well, I'm glad that you made this mistake because uh, now you'll understand, oh, okay, not to do that. So negative 2 squared is negative 4, okay, not a positive 4. Okay, so this is where we're at in this problem. So let's go ahead and continue to clean this up. 
So at this point, we have three um, numbers we need to multiply. Now, some of you can just kind of do this math all at once, but I'll just take it uh, nice and easy, and we'll go from left to right. So three times negative four, again, hopefully up to speed. On your positive and negative numbers, this is a negative 12. So now we have negative 12 times a negative 12. A negative times a negative is a positive, okay? So this situation is the same thing as 12 times 12. Now, if I'm taking the square root of 12 times 12, the square root of a number, okay, like for example, four, what you're asking is what number times itself gets back to this number, okay? Well, uh, obviously the answer is two. So you can see that we're um, really taking the square root of 12 times, uh, uh, the square root of 12 times 12, hopefully, most of you can see that the answer is going to be 12, okay, because this times itself is getting back to the to the answer. Another way you could look at this, for those of you that are a little bit stronger in mathematics, have um, uh, some experience working with powers and exponents, 12 times 12 is the same thing as 12 squared, okay? Now, if we kind of go back to what I was talking about with the square root being equal to 1 half, another way to look at this problem is 12 squared, okay, all that to the one half power, okay? And now there's a uh, property in mathematics when we have an outside exponent, we can multiply it to the inside exponent, so one half times two is one, so our answer is 12 to the first or 12, okay? But let's suppose you didn't know all that and you're like, well, 12 times 12, maybe you didn't uh, see that the answer here is going to be 12, so you could just continue on, right? So 12 times 12 is, of course, the square root of 144, and hopefully you're like, hey, wait a minute, I'm looking for a number times itself that's equal to 144. Well, I just multiplied 12 times 12, and I got 144, so the answer, uh, the square root of 144 must be 12, and of course it is. And um, another kind of common here, you should be pretty uh, familiar with common uh, square roots, things like the square root of 9, the square root of 16, the square root of 25, and so forth. And I would say uh, maybe the square root of 144. Maybe the first uh, number is up to like, say, 12, 13 or so. Uh, these are numbers that you should commit to your long-term memory. But uh, anyways, uh, we covered a pretty good amount here. Kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent with uh, these powers and exponents. But, you know, I want you to keep in mind with that when you're doing an order of operation problems, you know, a lot of um, students think, oh, that's like basic math. Well, yes and no, okay? One, you know, you really gotta have strong foundations to be successful math, but we can make our order of operation problems much more interesting by throwing in, you know, um, various functions and square roots and all kinds of good stuff. So, you know, you could be doing calculus problems and it doesn't make a difference. You, you, uh, anytime there's multiple different things going on, various operations, uh, mathematical operations in a problem, you always need to keep that PEMDAS in mind. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.